I partnered up with my friends over at Raycon to make over my second cleaning closet. Right now, this is just utilized with the floor and the one shelf and the rod that was traditionally a coat closet. Holly uses it a full-blown cleaning closet, but I really want to chic and zhuzh it up a little bit for her. Before we jump into the full tutorial, I do want to let you guys know about today's sponsor, Raycon, because you will be seeing me wear their everyday E25 earbuds throughout basically this entire thing if you haven't seen me wear them in the last three tutorials that I've posted now. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, which means you girl bought two without my discount code for my dad for Father's Day. That's how much I love these guys. They sound just as amazing as other top audio brands that you know and are great for working from home, working out, and listening to music and podcasts for hours without driving your roommates. Holly, sorry, significant other, I don't got it. Children, we don't have it. Neighbors, we do have them. We're not making them crazy. There are different sizes that you can swap out to fit it directly to your ear. The ones that they came with were perfect for me so I didn't have to swap them out. There also is a charging cord that you plug into the case that then charges the headphones. I have never owned a pair of wireless earbuds before and they are game changing. I definitely feel behind the times but I am insanely pumped on these because before my wire got caught on everything and it really isn't the most safe pair of earbuds to be wearing when you're doing carpentry and woodworking. So I am so excited to be able to just freely listen to my podcast, music, audiobooks, and not be disturbed or have my ears hurt from the sounds of all the power tools. On top of all of that, their everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet. With six hours of playing time, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Be sure to head over to buyraycon.com slash Mets. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash M-E-T-Z for 15% off your order. I really dislike saying this every single time, but the first thing is cleaning up, cleaning out, demoing anything if you need to, and then painting because paint always does a room good. The only difference I'm doing this time around is I'm taping out a little bit of a design that sort of failed just to give it a little bit of personality. Even though you are not going to be seeing the cleaning closet every time, I thought it'd be really cool if you opened it and you were just pleasantly surprised by how it looked. So I decided to bring in some terracotta, like warmer tones, and then add a pop of gray, not a pop of gray, just add a little bit of gray to tie in the black throughout the, all the other cleaning tools that Holly has on hand. If you are feeling sassy with paint, but don't want to execute that sassiness, paint a small closet, something you can't see, the back of a cupboard, I don't care. Just do it. Challenge yourself and see if you're comfortable with it. I do like how this came out. I definitely don't think I would do it in a cleaning closet again, but the reason that I did it is because I just wanted to see what this process was like and if I liked it, to move it into another room potentially. These are not just going to be stripes. I'm actually going to be making the coppery terracotta one. It, is that called an arch? Oh my gosh, my brain is just farting right now. And I hand painted that and that immediately gave me the utmost respect for people that do murals for a living because I even got this wrong a million one times. <laughs> I'm gonna take a breather on that because I was messing up the paint and I'm gonna start to add different shelving, but I'm not gonna secure the shelving all the way into this closet on the off chance we need to move it since our access point to the attic is up there. For this entire project, I am using all scrap wood and for the actual like shelf brackets, if you will, I am using one by twos. I like to drill a screw through the stud in the middle and then use my level to make sure that the screws on each side that are going into the other studs are keeping this thing completely level. I will be adding a full length shelf below the existing one and one above because there's plenty of space to utilize that for extra storage, cleaning supplies, etc. You guys want to hear how terrible I sound with those Raycon ends that you can't even see underneath my headband? Ooh, I'm sneaky, but listen to this voice. That's my way. Do it like that. Uh, I know Raycon, the noise canceling earbuds, they don't bother the neighbors, but damn, this voice does because I didn't even realize I was screaming and one time I just took my headphones off because I looked out back and the gardeners were legitimately looking around like, what in the world is that noise? <laughs> With the two wall-to-wall -wall shelves that I was talking about, the side pieces are gonna go all the way across those walls, but for the two smaller shelves I will be doing, cause I'm gonna be splitting uh, half of the closet down below for two different things. I'm only gonna make those 13 inches deep. I decided to paint those the exact same pattern that the walls are so it blends in more.
While the paint was drying, I decided to make over the back of the cleaning closet door because I don't like how these traditional panel doors look, but our budget isn't about to go towards upgrading all the doors in the house because we want to do flooring first and foremost. I added some wood glue and then picked up two pieces of 24 by 48 under laminate from my local Home Depot and just put that right onto the door itself and secured it with my nail gun. If you are going to be doing this, you need to keep in mind that this door will no longer shut because you're adding another layer to it and the frame that is originally there is there for the original door. So what you need to do is go back in, pop off the trim that kind of holds the door in place when you close it and scoot it back the amount that you're adding to the door. For instance, this under laminate is a quarter inch thick, which means I need to go in, rip this trim off and replace it a quarter inch deeper so that door can sit flush when you close it. You can see the saw marks on the side of that door. It's just because I went in with my circular saw to make sure that that wood I added was flush prior to installing it back onto the frame and adding a broom organizer to the door. Oh, somebody take me back to kindergarten and report to my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Watermelon, that I cannot draw a circle. I cannot paint a circle. I don't know what just happened here, but that was my main intention. And it just turned into something else real quick. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that looks like. I don't think that's a circle. Oh no. I have no idea. <laughs> I was like looking back at the camera like, oh my God, how embarrassing. I will be adding edge banding to the existing shelf because that's what I will be doing with the other plywood shelving I am also adding to this closet. I want it to look very cohesive. For the lower half of the closet, I feel like we really couldn't do much. So I'm gonna be adding a piece of plywood that is 40 inches tall by 13 inches deep and supporting that with L brackets into studs or drywall anchors. And then on the right hand side where we put those 13 inch braces for shelving, I will be making sure that it is level all the way across, but using plywood and nail gunning it level on the opposite side. So now we have two shelving units on the right hand side with some area below. And then the left hand side is for the taller items like the vacuum and the stools. The reason that this is 48 inches tall is because that is where my next shelf that I added is going to be. And I'm just gonna tack with two simple little nails for my nail gun to make sure that it's gonna hold that 48 inch piece. Nice, straight, vertical, and there's no like floppiness when you're taking things on and off of the shelving unit. As I always say with everything, get something cute to hold all your things because it just makes the space that much better. I picked up some of these baskets from Home Goods. I like that you can kind of see what is in each versus getting like the solid ones and forgetting and having to pull them out consistently. Now all that there is left to do is move into this space fully and enjoy our new cleaning closet. I feel like we have been doing a ton of small closets over on my channel, but I really do think it's such a great way to start with makeovers because doing a full bedroom, living room, kitchen, that's just a little bit overwhelming. If you have never dabbled into makeovers, I highly suggest tackling a cleaning closet because it oddly will give you this weird power to be addicted to then make over other spaces. Start small, make it manageable for you, and just dive in. Oh my gosh, okay, well let, let me, oh, you want me to chase you? I will chase you. I'm trying to shoot finals. That dog is really the star of the show. That's really why you guys are here. Do not forget that. Oh, also she's literally all over my TikTok, so find me over there. Anyways, I hope you guys took a little bit of inspiration away from this. Let me give you a mini tour. This is like the daily stuff, I feel like. This is what she grabs to the most. 
And this is all bathroom stuff. Down here, we're gonna have all the towels for the mops and just the rags that she uses. And then this guy holds all of her clean refillers. I don't even know, sponges and whatnot. And now the floor doesn't look as overwhelming because we utilize the door to hang all of the things. Don't judge the circle on the left-hand side. Boy, do I love you guys. And I, oh, I'm just really feeling myself again and I cannot wait to bring you all the makeovers in August. There are so many exciting things. So stay tuned. I will see you soon for another DIY.